Are you going to read? Yeah, I'm just going to read um, like for okay. five minutes. It's it's the second half of the the scene that's set at the Wellfleet Cinema. Um, oh. It's the the whole town, not the whole town, but well, pretty much the whole town comes out to see the premiere of the movie Philadelphia. Yes. And I don't think I need to say anything more than that. On the other hand, it's a relief to be seen. Queer people, people with AIDS, survivors, HIV negative people, all of us. How long have we been erased? And if we haven't been erased, we've been represented as depraved, weak. Not that some of those representations aren't hilarious. Joel Cairo in The Maltese Falcon, Sebastian in Suddenly Last Summer. Enough. The theater goes dark. I'm watching characters move across the screen, but thinking more about Noah holding my hand, rotating the knuckle of my thumb with his own. Is there anything more satisfying than having your significant other holding your hand out in public at a movie? Straight people take this for granted, but queer people, we can hardly wait for the lights to go down. And once the movie gets going, the real happiness begins. Noah's hand in mind. But the film is so determined not to offend, not to get things wrong, it's managed to situate itself in a weird in-between place. It isn't exactly bad, but I'm watching the way I would watch a documentary about dying dolphins. And I say that loving dolphins, but they're not me. Every time a potentially wrenching exchange happens on the screen, Noah squeezes my hand until it feels like the manual equivalent of Morse code. The movie isn't afraid to say, this is the one story of AIDS. No matter longtime companion, no matter brother to brother, no matter the man with night sweats, no matter the body and its dangers, no matter people in trouble. And I'm annoyed that it doesn't intuit that there are countless stories that will never make it to the screen, stories of Black, Asian, Latino people, stories of women. Hollywood has the power to sear a narrative into the collective imagination. And though I resent that power, what about all those film executives still in the closet? I sit tight and obey. I won't start muttering complaints while I'm still in the theater. And then a man stands up halfway through the film abruptly. It is a bright scene as the whole theater is illuminated. He is crying like a baby, a baby boy, and it wouldn't be so wrenching if he weren't such a tough looking guy, leather vest, Levi's, salt and pepper mutton chops. I've seen him around town always in his leather bomber jacket and white t-shirt, always too butch to even look in my direction. He can't stand it. Once you represent something, it's real. And up until now, AIDS has only been a horrible dream. Now he knows it's an emergency and he stands up weeping. I want to protect him. I want him to stop breaking my heart. I want him to keep crying as nothing up on the screen feels as powerful as this or the absolute discomfort of seeing it, listening to it. He walks out breathless. I don't know whether he's crying for someone lost or for himself or both. Maybe he's crying because he thinks he'll have none of the people once closest to him, his parents, his sister, when he dies, and he must suffer through this well-intended movie that insists every life is of purpose, every life shaped by logic. He has never known such good fortune. And if he should get sick, his friends, his friends, while well-meaning, might turn out to be flakes when they're most needed. They have bailed on him before and they'll bail on him again. And what should he expect when he's loved them for their spontaneity and quick passion and unreliability? Dependable people, as he knows, are boring people. And he knows what it's like to abandon others too. For a while, I don't see the man at the gym, at the AMP, or at the coffee house at the Muse. Not that I'm exactly keeping an eye out for him, 
That's just how it is when disappointment is as routine as breakfast. Oh, thank you, Paul. Thanks, Susan. I loved hearing you read that passage.